Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate and welcome to a new year. Rest assured, we are here to ensure it's a productive year for us all as we continue advocating for a better society. I waste no time in challenging the foresight or even investment behind what we have termed Vision 2020. Seydu too is putting our preparedness to test and finding it wanting. He's shining the torch on the jam and the national identity number catastrophe. Ekene is provoking a matter that seems to have stirred up more than a few of us, the Supreme Court judgment concerning Imo state governorship. Chuka is said to hold our government officials accountable. This time, some would say he's said to address the matter of their job profile. Uche looks to start the new year on a positive note, should be celebrating some governors of note, in other words, deserving of the title, Your Excellency. Are there any? So just wait to see. So prepare for an edition in which we celebrate the good and critique the bad, no hold bar. After the break. A vision without a corresponding mission will end up as a mere delusion. Welcome to Vision 2020. Years ago, for ASEP, we set national goals and we named it Vision 2020 to be among the first 20 most developed nations on earth by the year 2020. The descending new den were up to our usual jokes. Those were the words of my learned senior mentor, GT Ogunye. But how do we expect to attain such a height when there are no legal framework for dealing with negligence in our professional endeavors like medicine, law, building, engineering, and even government, apart from living for God? How can we achieve a vision for the Nigerian education when it is not good enough to educate the custodian of the same educational system who will rather send their kids abroad? How can one translate a vision of making a country a medical hub when the world-class hospital built by a former governor wasn't found good enough to treat the same former governor's minor bruises sustained in a motor accident? How can a nation whose pastors are among the richest in the world with a congregation of the poorest people on earth achieve greatness by mere vision without corresponding efforts and mission? We must be joking. Our manufacturing companies are being bought over by churches and would rather build a 13 kilometer church auditorium than build a 10 kilometer expressway or a five kilometer juice making factory despite the abundance of natural fruit. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Who do you want to achieve such a huge feat when the worst of us are the ones ruling over the affairs of the best of us? Which country can achieve greatness when its government officials will rather invest in properties in Dubai that set up businesses that will create employment opportunities for the teeming youth? Dubai had a similar vision 40 years ago. They created a mission to actualize same, and today they are one of the most visited countries on earth with 50 million visitors annually, including our politicians who go there to hold meetings, spending an average of $5,000 per visit. We mouth farming as if that's what there is to development, until we realize that farming without value added, like transportation, storage and processes is poverty. If we like, let us close our borders for 100 years. We'll wake up one day to realize that the world has moved on without us. We celebrate a governor for tarring road with four times the cost price as though he spent his money. Yet we expect the realization of a vision. A politician rigs election or a friend is given appointment and we troop out to churches and mosques to do thanksgiving. Yet we expect them not to steal. A custom officer at our airport, border control, gateway into the country, turns his duty post to a begging post. Oga, wait till you bring come for us. Oga, your boys are here. Without sanctions, yet we want the world to take us seriously. Here, GT again. Since then, in aimless sightlessness, we continue to grow. It is clear we are not as serious as we often boast. 
when the vision was set two wasted decades ago, yet 2020 was a faraway landing post. Now the year is here, but we're in a deeper hole than the one in which we were many years ago. Hurry, let's set another vision based on divine hope. With no work, we'll still reach our destiny at Dorado. We need not plan or think to attain newly set goal. After all, our rich land still yield the inexhaustible black gold. My advocacy today is until government and every one of us in position of authority in Nigeria show selfless leadership by example, even if we set visions for eternity, without a corresponding mission, it will still end up a vision of delusional grandeur. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Actually, um, as you were you know, giving your advocacy, what came to mind, several things came to mind. Uh, remember Dora's, Dora Kinui's, um rebranding Nigeria? And again, we knew at the time, what are you rebranding exactly? You know, are you just rebranding Nigeria to try and make it sound good? Meanwhile, there's nothing of substance really there to rebrand. Then I remembered um, Vision 2020 also included lighting up Nigeria. So everybody was supposed to have lights by Vision 2020. <laughs> are we any closer to that? Um, we're hearing that so much money has been spent on electricity and yet nothing's come through. Then the latest one was Nigeria Air. That for me is the great, the best um, analogy or the best example of our so called setting goals that, you know, we basically put together a logo and cre created an airline out of nothing. Spent money. And spent money out of nothing. So, yes, you're absolutely right. If we carry on like this, we're just governing with our mouths. Uh, you know, there's nothing of substance on ground and we're never going to get anywhere. We look at the schools, for instance. We want to be able to compete with developed nations, but look at our schools. We have people studying computer science without computers. How is that to happen? Abacus. So you're absolutely Abacus. right. Um, we're never going to reach that El Dorado, as you put it, unless we start to put in the work. I mean, the, the word that came up for me in your thing that struck me was the word seriousness, mm -hmm. you know, and it's almost as if we're still playing at, at being a nation. Um, why I sort of am sympathetic to Dora's vision is just that depending on who you ask and depending on what they're looking at, Nigeria is a great nation, a good nation with great people. Mm -hmm. it, the, the, what is lacking is that focus. And, and because we're in an every man for himself, you're not able to focus people on the greatness that mm -hmm. we can tap into. Because mm -hmm. when you look at other countries and branding, they're focusing on the greatness and they're able to encourage people to you know, key into a common vision. But as it is now, every man for himself, because when you look at the man at the airport, you know, why is he happy to say, oh, God, what do you have for me? I, sometimes I look at that and I wonder, what will I give you that will be enough for you to be lowering yourself, touting? You know, what will I really give you at this airport that will make it worth your while well, to continue to demean yourself? No, but he, so there's something. There's a, there, <laughs> no, but even then, it's still it's still very short-sighted. Mm. Some of the things we target are very short-sighted. But so isn't it because we have to survive for today? That, that's Absolutely. the mentality that you have to survive for today. That mm. takes your eye off tomorrow and the goal, because vision is about setting a goal mm. for the future. But as long as you're looking at today's bread. You're ready to give your birthright for today's bread. Meaning that you don't have... So we need leadership. Yeah. That's the point. We need leadership that's able to look beyond today and show people sacrifice. Yes, show people that, absolutely. okay, you lay down today for tomorrow. So some of the things we see happening today, the way people are selling out on a daily basis shows that we're not projecting. Mm -hmm. We're happy to give up today's... I mean, we'll cross into Seydou's uh, advocacy in a short while, but it just shows we're not long-term no. thinking. Yeah. We're absolutely. thinking of today. And once you're thinking of today, is every man for himself. Mm -hmm. And every man for himself will not produce a vision for tomorrow. You know. yeah. well, you see, the I, thing, sorry, you see, the yeah. thing is, I think that um, it's, it's, when, whenever there's elections all over the world, people talk, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And so I think a lot of people talk so well, you vote for them, mm. and they never do anything. Case in point, actually, is Obama. Obama speaks more than what he can do. Yes, and that's where we have a problem in this country. Mm. We get up and we want to speak, then we win. But we really we were empty heads in the first place. Mm. So nothing is going to come out of it. We delight in talking. Buhari has been going on for four and a half years now. We will do this. The country should be like this. He has never done, well, you know, he hasn't really done anything relatively. He has not done one, not, you know. let's use the right words. <laughs> so so, so right. basically, we need a situation where people do do I, things. I like, I like uh, you know, when you mentioned mission that once you don't have clear mission, then your yeah. vision is definitely going to be uh, misplaced. I believe uh, we have structural problem. Our constitution is faulty. We have leaders coming in, you know, with different vision. 
once the country, once we have clear have even direction. A in the first place. Yes, if we have a clear direction, we want to develop our country along uh, education, technology, then Tourism. successive government will come and follow through mm. on those plans. But here, each government comes with their own different agenda. And you know, it just goes clearly to show that we have um, that mission issue, you know, clearly, clearly defining where our, our direction is, you know. And this is encouraged by the Constitution, the Constitution is 40. Yeah. Once you get in there, the, the powers are so Vast. It's 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 because enormous. Because I'm even thinking when you talk about you know everybody has their own vision. I, I know that there was a young man who said he came in to try and empower a local government, um, a certain area with a sports facility that would benefit. It was a selfless gesture, mm -hmm. but he was told almost point blank that how long will this take to deliver? Oh, it won't be delivered in my tenure. I'm not interested mm. because everybody's looking for themselves. Exactly. They're looking for their own immediate and, and, and that's gain. That's why for me, rounding up on this is, if we have a clear cut vision. And then we now say this is the mission to achieve mm -hmm. it, irrespective of the government. Exactly. You it's just come absolutely. and you key. Key into it. If you go back to time, you see uh, all our developmental plan. But every government comes and they begin to do mm -hmm. their own. But well, so you see, it's about laying right foundation. Sedu speaks to the foundation of our plans and projects after the break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Government agencies and the culture of unpreparedness. By failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. As a quote by Benjamin Franklin, three days ago, the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, announced the suspension of the National Identity Card number, NIN, as a prerequisite for registration for the forthcoming Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. This suspension is as a result of the outcry from both prospective candidates and the parents alike. The lack of adequate uh, preparation, sensitization, and the timeline for implementation settles what, what should ordinarily be a laudable and noble idea. The idea, if it had been well implemented, is capable of curbing impersonation and other exam malpractices. This goes to show how disconnected our policymakers can be from the daily realities of average Nigerians and our peculiarities. Our government and her agencies are fond of fire brigade approach to policy formulation and implementation with total disregard to our peculiarities as a people. This case clearly shows the apparent lack of coordination and cooperation among various government agencies, as we have witnessed several times in the past. This time, it is JAM and NIMC. Who knows what agency will be next? Back to the same advocacy. Follow-up <laughs> mission, <laughs> projection. You know, projections. Fantastic national identity card management, mm -hmm. you know. And then you say, look, anything you are doing, there should be an identity. With that, if you have your information already, you know, stored in the national identity card uh, data, data mm -hmm. all you need to do, once you put in your name, uh, Jam will automatically call it up. And But here, the problem is everybody will have to go to one small mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know that there is no time. You still need this young lads need to register. Rather than create multiple, multiple registration centers to ease the process, mm. we always want to make it difficult. At the end of the day, the aim and objective of the project is defeated. You say you suspend it. Mm. You are back to square one. Money has been spent. And nobody is sanctioned for policy somersaults. The man simply just comes and says, you see, um, because we don't want you know, this problem that is created, no, we have stopped it. And he's not punished. Parents are happy. After all, we don't have to go through this stress. Mm. 
you know, when all of this happens, we will continue to waste resources, waste opportunity, waste policies, and yet go around the circles and we not achieve anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and actually to tag on to that, we recycle on seriousness. Because mm -hmm. if you keep reinforcing that your, your deadlines are not to be taken seriously, there are no consequences for frustrating a, 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 an endeavor like this, then it will happen again. Yeah. You know, I was listening to the um, NIN uh, top ranking official and he was saying, well, you know how it is, is the way we are Nigerians, that they had told them in advance, and, but you know how Nigerians are, they like to wait till the last minute. But he was able to still say that he went to certain schools and he named some very top ranking public private schools that he went to and they registered everybody there. Why not provide that same convenience for others? And mm -hmm. people were saying, why not make it available in banks? There are ways people can register. Yeah. Why must they, I saw people in Anaosa, come and see the queues, Come and yeah. see the people who are taking advantage, selling drinks and food. These are the same students you want to grow up in an economy where you want them to be thinking like the future of Nigeria. Mm. So I just feel like he says we make it difficult for ourselves we, and there must be penalties. And there, there must be. be. Otherwise it will happen again and again and again. Yeah, and the problem I also have with these, um, these uh, policies is that they always tag on to, like for instance, this NIM. They said, ah, you can't get your passport renewed unless you have okay, your like NIM. a threat. <laughs> you can't do this unless even the one of the stop and search produce your, you know. And it's almost like they don't, they don't take into account the peculiarities of Nigeria and that most people don't even have IDs. Most people don't have these things. And you suddenly just put a law into place for no apparent reason. Now, okay, so you've registered people. I registered, uh, I, I, you know, I've registered for my NIM. Yes. But one and a half years later, you have the temporary still, one, right? I still have my same here. One. And uh, they've been doing this NIN. It didn't just start today. They've been doing it for ten years. And you I need remember for somebody your who originally had one. He said he had it ten years ago. It, now that one is not valid. Mm -hmm. He needs to get a new one. Why are we like this? Yeah. Why can't we just make you know, it easier? Think things through. Yeah. First of all, think it through. Yeah. You know, and then the make processes. sure you put the process yeah. in place. Why do we behave like this? It's the same for even driver's license. Yes. You name anything you have to do. They make it so labyrinthine, mm. so that you have to suffer. The, but the project for... ordinarily is a very laudable one. Yes, of course it is. But That's... my my challenge is yes, I did one. Even when I went to renew my passport, mm. I was shocked that immediately they record my NIA. my NI details. details. Fantastic! I said, oh, this is good. And then they now say that. Um, so I asked them, do you work on Saturday? They say no. But if you could make arrangement for us, like some churches, you, know, <laughs> you can come and oh, register yes. you people there. Okay. And yes. So yes. Some schools will have to make special arrangement yes. for them to yes. bring these machines. Yes. You have to give so you give something in return. Yeah. So why, did, since you know that you want everybody. everybody to have numbers to be able to register for Jam, why don't you start it from schools? Yes. Say okay. Every school must have at least three, four machines deployed mm. strictly for that school, yeah. so that even before you write your work, your final exam, you're already captured. Yes. So you know that these people that are writing final exam, the possibility that almost all of them are going to write jam is there. So you have at that level, you've captured them. So instead of now creating a very big problem. No. It's, it's, We're not synchronized. Know, yeah, maybe I'll let you yeah. guys think it yeah. deeply. <laughs> no, I, I think you see. All, all, you, I, I feel sorry for. I, I feel sorry for everybody because, um, <laughs> including well, yourself. Yeah, even for my, yeah, yeah, even me. I'm. I'm. I'm now. You know, nothing works because it's all about money, mm. and that's it. Okay. Until it is not about money, you will get ideas that will sail through. First, you get the ideas, and secondly, they will sail through. Everybody keeps talking about their ideas. Their ideas. They are none. Because you're just giving praise, maybe because the only way you think you can get through every day in this country is by some positive thinking. But it doesn't work that way. Mm. You know, good ideas. But the NIN is a good idea. Is it? It, really? it is. Why it not? is a good idea. But you want identity <coughs> number, you've got passport, you've got all sorts not of things. Not everybody has a passport. And but not everybody has an identity number. But it can be generated no, that's why for everybody. Saying, that's, that's so why, why don't we just concentrate? Why don't we? No, why don't you come? That's why they're saying. No, hang on. Let everybody go generate an identity number. Why don't Why don't Why don't your social security number? Why don't we instead all have passports so that we can use it for identity Hang on. And have them and we can. And travel. Chuka in London, I know so many that's people less that don't have passports. That's less practical than a yes, country. Security. That's right, less better than they have a, a social security. Right they have a social security. Whatever. Whatever. That's an organized country. So since yeah. we, are, we are starting so to organize ourselves, let us have our social security number is the NIN number. Well, the passport is a step up. We have failed to get an identity number thing going. 
That's what Do you know what, what I think no, is yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, got... The, the policy is not a bad one. Yeah. It's not a bad policy. It's just that we the can process. never implement anything yeah. properly. The, for know. years, what we've I been at this thing. We, we have not utilized... There's so many agencies that collect data. Now, what do they do with this data? Banks, they'll ask you to BVN. register. BVN, SIM card. SIM card. All of this data can be centralized and you keep refining them. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go through all of this, you know, processes. Yeah. If there's a central no, but, repository but, but, but for the information. Here, the problem so here rather is... than because like you said, it's it's about money. Mm -hmm. You've generated you... but all this information you're asking, we've given them well, through no, say, one but, means or the other. But say, the problem you know? here is quickly is that all of this data is not everybody has SIM card, not everybody has account. But everybody can have a social security number. True, true. And so when you have this social security number in form of an, a, a, a national identity card number, with that, you don't need to register for SIM card again. That's where I would have problems. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to go to the bank and they say generate a special BVM because once you log on my social security number, it pulls up my information. Yes. And you, you know, no, it, should, it should be synchronized. I think so you don't get behind this NIN to be sorted out. Yes. All these things deliberately. You yeah. know what's important? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Choose not right. to do yeah. it. Mm. So, well, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're listening. They'll do something. Yeah. So we advocate so that the gap between knowing the right thing to do and the actual implementation might be brought closer together. After the break, Ekenya is a passionate advocate of preserving the people's voice over the matter in Imo State. Ekenya, I wait to hear from you. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. People can speak for themselves as to whether they're for a situation or against it. I'm going to be talking about Imo State, the ruling, whether it's a victory for the people or daylight robbery. The recent Supreme Court ruling that saw Governor Ihedioha deposed and instead Uzo Dimma shunted from fourth place to first place by apparently a unanimous ruling of seven Supreme Court judges brought tears to my eyes. In what jurisdiction are we to believe that 333,000 illegally excluded votes, a situation ratified by INEC, I hasten to add, were miraculously found and now endorsed by the highest court in the land, thereby resulting in over 426,000 votes that led to the APC candidate taking the lead from the rear. Has Imo State not suffered enough? The facts speak for themselves. Terrible roads, seriously neglected infrastructure, vulgar mismanagement of state resources, and a groaning populace akin to what led to the biblical proclamation of God to Pharaoh via Moses when he said, let my people go. I heard from sources on the ground that news of the ruling that Ihedioha was deposed was greeted by scenes reminiscent of a state in mourning. I have been made aware that there is more to the ruling than meets the eye. The backstory is that INEC may have acted ultra-virus in disqualifying the votes in over 300 polling stations because of fears that the accumulated votes allegedly garnered by the APC candidate, Uzo Dimma, could not legally be accounted for. Would that justify the Supreme Court ruling, however? Hmm. An insider report from a senior member of INEC states as follows. INEC didn't certify the results from the three, 388 polling units Uzodima applied to the tribunal, which issued a subpoena to the Nigerian police. A deputy commissioner of police tendered what they call the police copies of the results. Although rejected by the election petition tribunal and the appeal tribunal, the Supreme Court overruled them. It added the figures and declared Uzodima winner based on the highest number of votes. Nothing was said about spread, i.e. the requirement that a candidate must also score at least a quarter of the votes in two-thirds of the LGAs in a governorship election. 
while determined to carry out the orders of the Supreme Court to issue Senator Hope Uzodima, candidate of the All Progressives Congress, a certificate of return as the duly elected governor of Imo State, and withdraw the one it previously had given to Emeka Ihedioha of the People's Democratic Party, the leadership of the Independent National Commission is still reeling from shock over the verdict, close quote. Well, we're reeling too. This sits side by side with figures cited from Premium Times and other mainstream media, referencing the announcement of the state's returning officer, which show the following. And I quote, Vice Chancellor of the Federal University of Agriculture, Umundike Abia State, Francis Atunta, gave the total registered voters across the state's 27 local government areas as 2,221,008 and the total accredited voters as 823,743. He said a total of 25,130 votes were canceled across the state with total valid votes as 714,355, while the total votes, votes cast is 739,485, close quote. These figures show a significant discrepancy in the current figures of 927,000 Three, 630, when you include the votes validated by the Supreme Court ruling. As we know, numbers can't lie. It appears that most people smell a rat, and it stinks. It seems that currently the voice and will of the people account for very little in the race of a few to divide up the booty that is our state commonwealth. We must more than ever drive this particular conversation till it resonates in the corridors of power. We must move for e-voting and transparency towards future elections. We must keep pushing for accountability to ensure that what seems like daylight robbery is never again camouflaged as the people's victory. I, I think um, there's a lot of misinformation in your uh, advocacy. Um, first, you said that, um, that uh, the 333,000 votes were excluded because INET thinks. Um, that's INEC opinion. And if INEC, you know, in INEC's opinion, they wrongfully excluded because they thought they were vote manipulated votes, the, it's now, the onus is now on, um, it's left for the petitioner, the man who is alleging that those votes were his, to approach <coughs> the courts. And it is within the court's power to either accept his argument or refuse the, that argument. And so if you agree, like INEC have agreed, that there were indeed 333,000 votes, but that they rejected those votes, what they ought to have done would be that these 333,000 votes were manufactured. This is the original one. This is the re-vote from this area. In the absence of that, the court will accept what is before them. <coughs> and you cannot use words of mouth to dispute what is in a document. They also said that they were not certified by INEC. Original documents does not need INEC certification. What happens was the policeman said, this were document handed over to us by INEC at the polling units. After the election, what usually happens is if you are a, an election observer, or you are a party agent, or you are a security agent at the polling unit. They are triplicates of the results. Once they are prepared and duly signed, you are handed a copy. So all of these policemen that went to monitor election in those areas, I think they reported copies to the area command. And so the area commander was subpoenaed by the court to come tell what the, you know, the document he received. And he brought the document and said, this were the documents I received. And in those documents, APC candidates scored 333,000 votes that were not included in these votes, Cumulate, cumulated, calculated vote. So what INEC and the petitioner ought to have done would have been to disprove those votes using documents and witnesses from those same polling units. In the absence of that, you can't by words of mouth say, oh, there were irregularities, and so that was why. And then when you cancel votes, if you, if you accept a vote, you add it to the figure. Even when you reject a vote, 
you must still add it to the total figure to say this vote was casted or cast, sorry, but we rejected it. And so it will be part of your votes rejected. If you look at the figures that you read out, it was only 25,000 votes that they allegedly Invalid. rejected. rejected. As canceled, invalid votes. No, yeah. the cancelled votes. Mm. So what that means is that in taking cognizance of the fact of this 333,000 vote, they didn't even record it at all as whether okay. valid or invalid vote. Okay. So they didn't form part of the number of total number of accredited votes from the state. So can, 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 can the complaint then be laid against what has just happened in the Supreme Court, really? Yeah. No, what happened... Because what they've done, there must be another basis to bring up a case. It won't be the same case. You won't call it the same case. No, there must it is. be a way what? to come back at this matter. No. If no. indeed no. there may be regular votes. No, what happened was... Yeah. the. Let me explain it in everyday language. What happened was... Election result were, was announced, and after the result was announced, the man who came forth, scored 96,000 votes, said, look, there is 333,000 votes that were not added to my vote. If added, I will come first. So tribunal, please look at these issues. So the tribunal looked at it and said, no, the documents were dumped on us. Yeah. So did but you want anyway, to say, yeah. One thing I do, I mm. mean, let's put all that to the side. Ekene's advocacy really does make sense. We need more transparency. We need to move on to e-voting. Yes, we need all those things so that we can mitigate against this exact situation See, happening But then again. quickly, it wasn't yeah. about the yeah, fact so that both parties, one is better than the other. They are all the same. In as far as I'm concerned, but we truly need to elevate. I mean, there's our more. There's, there's clearly more we can say on this Absolutely. thing. Do you want yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. Just mm, to well. add that e-voting. I mean, this just makes a case that we need to try something else, mm. or in addition to what we're doing, yeah. there's need to migrate to e-voting. Okay. Yeah. Maybe on another occasion, I'll, yeah. I'll have my rebuttal of Libras's arguments. But for now, let it let it stand. A crucial part of holding ourselves to high standards is the role your feedback plays. On our special edition, Miriam Jamiu says. Ekene, Chuka, Emeka, and of course, you know, Uche and Seidu, and Libras, and the rest of the pioneer of the advocates have done a good job by putting these people together. They actually surpassed my expectations. Kudos to every one of them and all the people that have appeared on the advocate. Thanks, Miriam. The advocate is as much about you as it is about us, the spirit of the advocate in all of us to keep pushing forward for a better society. Uh, on sanitary pads for girls in schools, which is driving a lot of conversation, Akinjide Akinshola, a guy, says, this is the best advocacy for women I have ever watched or listened to in this part of the world. Interesting, very enlightening. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Tokwe Brass says, wow, never looked at sanitary pads this way. <laughs> Thanks, Treasure. Please let's know what we can do to support. I'm sure Treasure will be getting back to you. P.S. It was so good to hear your eloquent voice again after so many years, took me right back to broadcasting school. Treasure, you clearly have a, a fan club. We all keep flying the flag for the sake of a better society. So do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Chuka holds our government officials to a standard as concerns their job description. This is certainly one area where Chuka ain't turning over a new leaf. Carry go, Chuka. <laughs> Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very, terrible. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Let's keep advocating for a better society, we keep saying. So here we are in 2020, and what's to change? Well, we keep at it. Fire on the mountain, run, run, run. Now, to quote 
we thank God it has been a very successful year relative to the composition of this country, both politically and ethnically. The words of Major General Buhari during the Christmas break, really, Mr. President, your villa must be an ace example of an insular complex out of touch with Nigeria's reality. I'd like to inform Buhari of a few things he should put on his to-do list. Let's look at these recent happenings. First, Jigawa plans to build 95 mosques, of which five are for daily prayers and others for Friday sessions and all. Bidding might have begun by now. Second, Nyesom Wike declared Rivers a Christian state twice in the last three months, then arranged prayer sessions during which to propound his outrageous thoughts. Third, Delta Governor Okowa and others, including Udom of Akwaibom, staged elaborate noisy worship sessions with state funds in a multi-faith Nigeria. And these events are televised as achievements of these lazy-minded politicians. Clergymen are eager to see more of these events, and in Lagos, it is always a jamboree. For years, we have been spending public funds sending our people on faith pilgrimage to seek a creator who is right here in Nigeria and everywhere. What is developing are a series of faith-defined enclaves in parallel with Muslim fundamentalist siege created by terrorist organizations, and it is dangerous. Perhaps we are already there, and I am sounding a late warning. Our constitution surely, certainly, does not allow for these acts and proclamations. Wike and his Jigawa counterpart, Mohammed Badaru Abubakar, have overstepped bounds and are playing make-believe heroism. They are setting fire to Nigeria. Maybe today now, they don't set fire at it, you know. <laughs> That's why you're asking that. Like, is it too late? Nah. Is it but too late? But I want, I want this... to go to your, um, both of yours, actually. This yeah. whole vision and, you mm. know, what unites us. And I feel that I'm sympathetic in a way. I feel sorry for us, a bit like Chuka, in the sense that you see that the politicians are playing us at our own game. It's almost like a panacea or what is it that they said religion is the opium? It's like opium. they're trying to the dope you up. Yes. And, you know, blind your eyes because they're not doing what they should do. So they say, give, give them religious activity, give them so that they'll get yeah. so carried away that they will not notice that, you know, you, you will notice that they're not doing what they should actually do. And then I feel sorry for us that we're so sold on that panacea or whatever it is they're doing because you must be able to see that. I mean, there was a video which I haven't yet watched that shows Wike in his elements, you know, mm. as arrogant as... How many of you came with your champion. traditional mm, like your staff, staff office? Yeah. But meanwhile, you know, no, he's a champion, champion for Christianity. Christianity. Mm. But so clearly it's a cover or a detraction from what is really going on. And, and so we are now being so, we use religion, and religion is dividing us. Rather than looking for what unites us in the common interest, we're letting tribalism, like now if you take, uh, you know, the dreaded word, a uh, vision, we don't even know. We're never going to find out how useful that project is because it's been politicized. It's been, you know, if you do it, then what of people and they're calling it Boko Haram and iPod project. It's all crazy. We're so easily sold mm -hmm. this divisive, you know, uh, thing. Because, because we are so religious, even though less godly. <laughs> and that's this why. This is where we always come back yes, to with that's the verse. why. That's why the pastor, before it was on Sunday you go to church, Saturday you do house chores, Monday to Friday you, you hustle, work. you work. Yeah. But now you have Monday service, you have mm -hmm. midday service, yeah. you have Friday you. <laughs> you have Sunday Bible study. So they always want works. to drag you mm -hmm. to in church, there, yeah. to dope you into yeah. your way. Mm -hmm. Dope you. And so when the politicians realize that the people are being doped religiously and they are soaking in. Yeah. So let's use that thing that they that you know drives them crazy. Absolutely. To also hood with them. Yeah, they it use religion to, to polarize us. Um, they use religion to blind us. Well. But what I really, really, mm. really detest is that they use state funds or federal <laughs> funds <laughs> to fund religious That's activity. That's what's doping you, so they yeah. would push. You know, and, and, and people, they know that you won't complain. Yeah, but uh, people are not complaining. Mm. So th this is really what baffles me. I, I think we really need to stop as a country and step away from this thing called religion, you know, so that we can open our eyes and be able to see what these politicians are doing to us. Now we're still here doing Muslim, Christian, this one, that one. We're not focusing on what really matters, which is their performance, their but achievements. You see, first of all, why, sorry, see. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that um, I, somebody defined politics as, um, you know, uh, telling people what, you know, people that will tell you what you want to hear to get what they want yeah, from you. Now, syndrome. if religion is what 
you people are craving yeah. for. Mm. Fine, we'll throw religion and tell you we're a Christian state, mm. we're Islamic state, mm. and that, and, and we'll you know do our own bidding. Um, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. We're no, feeding isn't. off international mm. sentiments. In the U.S. today, we have uh, uh, Donald Trump telling you he's a Christian, Christian yes. feeding off the evangelicals, are now taking a center stage in decision making. You know, so it's not peculiar to us. But we need to be very careful. You know, with you know what they're doing to us, yes. and realize that that game. Yeah. Uh, it's not in our interest. Yeah. You know, we should ask them the, the, yeah. the that, that was questions. Where I was going to go, that we need to now start What exactly saying, are you what, going, what's the deliverable interest? for yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, what is in it for yeah. us? You, you see, for me, even in countries where you expect, you know, so much religiosity, I went to Dubai, for example, right at the airport. <laughs> right at the airport, I was busy looking for a mosque or where people were praying the way we do here. I went into the restroom. I was looking for some people to, who were their the, leg, uh, leg the on, the, on the, on the yeah, wash the wash basin. basin yeah. I didn't see any. And I said, look, but this is a Muslim supposed country. to be a Muslim Muslim country. country. Yeah. I sat down in a bus with in a train with somebody wearing hijab and he didn't tell me, oh no, you can't sit down with me. You know? That is supposed to be an Islamic country, but nobody, you know, cares about your religion, practices a private thing. You know, and yet that's what they now did with their religion is to ensure that the spirituality of it is used to promote mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. And that's why every year now, you know, from all over the world, people want to visit, you know, D Dubai. Yeah. Here, our own is, you, you, you have a lot of religion, religious people who are not godly. And they would rather take and give to God rather than use the brain that God has given to them. <laughs> no, uh yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I was thinking that, I was trying to liken it to saying that when you said it's not peculiar to Nigeria, and it's not even peculiar to our age, I think from time immemorial, people, no, no, hypocrisy, no, disagree. and let me land it now, that let what? me land it, you're free to disagree, that, it, it, that this whole abuse of whether, you know, religiosity Religion or appearances or being a hypocrite, fake stuff, yeah. is not peculiar to Nigeria, neither is it even peculiar to our <clears> age. You know, because I was thinking of even the biblical reference of the Pharisees. People want an appearance, and you know, they want to give an imp impression of something that they're not, so that they can get the accolades, they can get undeserved accolades, so to speak. So it can happen in any any dimension. You can see it in maybe the titles we give ourselves. You know, the the, the, the fronts and not the substance. Mm. So we just need to be a little more shine your eye and say, look, let's not be so let's not be so gullible mm. and okay. sold everything that looks good and glittery. So oh, you start supplicating behind before oh your excellency he hasn't delivered. Quickly, yeah. I, I know Chuka is running up, mm. but you find out that now it's 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 a big opium. Exactly. And, and that's Which is why where it's different from that's why it's saying. different. And is that's it? why yes, yes, that's why now we you, before our, you say anything, leaders. I can we tell you on Christmas, New Year Eve, I couldn't sleep in my house because somebody felt he was doing praise and worship mm -hmm. with a live band. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, you can't do this. He said, you want to allow the devil to use you to stop you from <laughs> yes, praising. No, but it's true. Yes. You know, yes. that's how, <laughs> how deep we have sunk oh into religious God. this thing. That if that probably that governor didn't come out to declare... Yeah, that look, that my what, 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 yeah. no, but, but let's not put the cat before the horse. Why people are immersed in religions? Because okay. there's nothing else working for them. If life was made a little less hard, people won't be so uh, obsessed in I a way that is I irrational. Yeah. If you could and, you know, you access the regular things of life, lights, water, right. schools, mm. then you would be using it as an obsession and you, know, you suspend your brain. Well, I, I, well, the I, I, those I, I, okay, well, there does not mean you suspend well, your brain. And because you have no other help. Okay. You know? Well, no, I you mean, shouldn't. I agree. Um, yeah. I think I think I think we have a, quite a way to go on this matter um, of uh, religion and the state. Very important, um, though it may not seem like like it in the midst of the journey. Persistence always pays off in the end. Anyway, Uche is motivated to celebrate a payday of sorts for a couple of our governors. Hmm. Uh, she gives <laughs> she gives them she actually gives them an impressive scorecard and says they've performed excellently. Not yeah, well, Uche will be the will be the judge of that. Over to you. <laughs> five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely. 
and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it does. Really it 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Although it takes some unearthing and polishing, with a little attention, we soon appreciate the brilliance of the once hidden gemstone. Today I'm going to be talking about the diamonds among the rough. That's right. In most people's minds, Nigeria and bad governance go hand in hand. Our leaders come to power with all manner of promises, or rigging in some cases, and can barely deliver on one complete project, let alone the many outlined in their campaign promises. However, every now and again, out of this mess and corruption cesspool, emerges a leader who understands what it truly means to lead, and that is to serve. Today, I want to celebrate two people that have really stood out for me, current governor of Oya State, Jay Mackinde, and Babagana Umara Zulum, current governor of Borno State. First, let's look at engineer Shay Mackinde, who hit the ground running, delivering in very little time. He set out a four-point agenda, which captures the essence of human existential realities, including economic expansion through agriculture value chains security, health, and education. Within his first 100 days, the governor's many achievements include procurement of 100 surveillance vehicles to strengthen security agencies across the state, cancellation of all levies paid in public schools in Oyo State, and replicating free education initiatives from the Awolowo era. There is now regular full payment of salaries, pensions are now paid monthly, and the youths have been energized and hugely empowered. Under this 52-year-old governor is a 32-year-old uh, as a speaker and a 27-year-old commissioner. Oyo State is now peaceful, highly promising state due to this man's vision and execution. Babagana Omara Zulum, a professor of agricultural engineering with no real political pedigree, who was elected despite the odds, has proven to be quite the revelation. He has ensured that discipline in the civil service returned, salaries paid up to date and on time, and that includes leave salaries. Despite the constant threat of Boko Haram, Zulum has still managed to embark on the rehabilitation of infrastructures such as schools, hospitals and communities, all within his first 100 days. Houses destroyed by Boko Haram have been reconstructed, the palace has been renovated and at least two and a half kilometers of road have been built. I will stop here, but do go and look these two outstanding governors up. And when I say outstanding, yes, it's not that difficult to be outstanding in this country. Anyway, they truly are worth celebrating. These men didn't come to play party politics. They came to serve their people as true leaders do. Mm. Yeah, truly. I think this man went around visiting the Southeast states when he became a governor. Which uh, man are you speaking Mac of? Mackinde, you know. Um, I mean, Mackinde is playing, uh, you know, it's, it's doing what looks like a very good uh, job. Oh, good. Um, I just, you know, when, when you're <laughs> Nigerian, you have to be suspicious. You know, it's like a policeman and there's something going on. You don't just see things and think everything's fine here. <laughs> In fact, the finer they get, the more you're worried. So I, I, I can only hope that Mackinde, who has declared that he's a very rich man, um, very, very rich actually, um, and does not need anybody's Steel. money, not, not, less, not least um, Oyo State's money, uh, that that's exactly what's going to happen. And that finally, we've, we're going to see okay. one of the first Nigerians that will, you know, that will show us uh, the way to lead. Things. I mean, he went around in the beginning going from one state to the other as if he was sort of giving support to the governor there, but more importantly, as if he was bringing his message to that governor. As if to say, I'm here to support you, 
if you look at what I, I am it was doing. PDP and and you know, they, were P, really? they were PDP guys, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I like what I'm seeing so far. I just am very, very suspicious. suspicious. Uh, fair let me, let me, yeah, let me to, to say to okay. quickly no, add, go ahead. to add to, to that, um, maybe my standards here are too high. Mm. Uh, coupled with the fact, <laughs> and I'm surprised. Coupled with the fact also that um, I have, um, I'm, I have seen insider knowledge. I've seen, you know, apart from insider knowledge, I've seen outsider okay. performance. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've seen what it takes to be to govern a state. Yeah. Okay. I've seen, you know, states working without having to make noise. Or, uh, you know, here we we are quick to celebrate. Uh, first hundred days, one year in office, and all of that. I have high hopes of governance because based on the promises made, and and so what I do, I tick the box. You know, these promises have this one will be met, and so there's still a long time. If you if you remember when Buhari came on board, light suddenly started working. You know, and people were like, oh, his body language. Yeah. And, you okay, know, the yeah. man had not mm. even said anything. His body language. language yeah. But when we now expected the body language, you know, to begin to to talk. All of a sudden, it died down. So, in the same vein, for me, it's too early to begin to excellence his excellency. Hmm. Okay, let me. I, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to. I would like to tell uh, Uche's line that we <laughs> should celebrate, you know, uh, governors that are uh, doing something, do, doing well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that are doing something mm -hmm. a little bit different. You know, who want to add value, and we're seeing that they're moving in that direction. You know, caring less if their intention because we can't you yes. can't speak for them what they're Correct, yeah. doing is what we're seeing and we yeah. should give them credit mm. um, I'd want to add that there, there are some other governors I think are also making strides in their states oh, like uh, Kaduna State I, Elder 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 no, I, I, I kind of I like <laughs> his, 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 his open government I think once we can hold our leaders accountable is a first step is one of the things we lack yeah, we need accountability. The governor of Zamfara State is doing very well. At least there's some level of uh, uh, security. Sanus security. He's mm -hmm. working okay, security. Zamfara. And so, yeah, we should celebrate those people, but we should also not relent mm -hmm. to hold them accountable. Let me come in. in with case, Uche's case. standard, yeah. the governors you have mentioned, yeah. yes, even, and even more. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let, me just quickly, let me quickly pitch in and say, yes, I think it's laudable. In a sense, even though Libras may be different to most, of, most the average Nigerian in my mind, because he's actually keeping a check of their promises. You know, my impression of Nigerians and the way we relate to engage with governance is that we don't pay attention to the promises, we don't hold them accountable, we don't monitor what they're doing. We just look at doing. the road start. Uh, no, we, yeah, we do even look at the road start. We, just, we are quick to complain without having specifics to sort of okay. say, what are we measuring? them up against. Oh, yeah. So you, you, maybe you complain when something specific affects your pocket and you jump up and you complain. But you don't actually have any way of saying, what has this guy done? So I'm mm -hmm. happy to even hear, one, the one that impressed me is that young commissioner, yeah. you know, and you know, just having that person in that position is an achievement. It's completely different to this old guard. Mm -hmm. Because it means that at least you have someone who's thinking hopefully differently. I know we have some Senator Abu mm -hmm. types who can mess up, but mm -hmm. I'm happy that Governor that guy... Kogi State is a young guy. And we're happy. Whenever we see fresh, <laughs> fresh talent, we're happy because it's <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> but but, that but that, that's aside, I, I also reminded me, because when she, she talked about this to me initially, I said, yes, sometimes the impression is that nothing good can come out of government. And it's just a reminder that, because I know recently I had the privilege of being alongside one of these government officials, and I saw how tirelessly he was working. Now, I could be suspicious and say what was that, but I, you know, the back story is that here is somebody who was really not feeling very well, but left the hospital and was rigorously doing his job. Mm -hmm. So there are people in the midst of all that, the diamond in the rough, mm -hmm. who are still, so we need to not only celebrate them, you know, to hold them up for others so that they'll be challenged, mm -hmm. but like um, Sadie said, keep on you know, monitoring them and keep on letting them know that we're watching them and we actually yeah, For me, them. what I do is, um, mm -hmm. it's not just about, I look at primary heads, because the, those project, those programs you promise that touch directly the life of the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Primary head, primary education, you know, basic mm -hmm. primary things. Mm -hmm. And then I also look at the costs. If you tell me you've tied a road, a two kilometer road, what is the cost? Mm -hmm. Or what's the yeah. cost? What ordinarily, how much did they spend? Because you find out sometimes this cost is times four. Yeah. yeah. You know, in some places. Yeah, so yeah. The money has been stolen. But you have, you have the bridge. Mm. It, it would have been built, even though it's expensive. It's mm. there. You know, you can question it. But, later, but when you, you do that, bridge. but when you do that, the, the money, the 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 money <laughs> meant yeah, to it, do all that all things. things yes. no, you're fair enough, it. but we, we, we've been in a country where even the money meant to do it's, it's not swallowed, going anywhere. It's not done. 
Yeah. But you know, the, let yeah, me you just even that give an, an extra update. Uh, nice give an update yeah. on Shay McIndy. Um, only yesterday, I read that he's also there's going to be free health care for all your residents now okay. because he's gone in his working conjunction with missions in order to provide this. So I, he's, he's thinking, he's thinking and he's really help. he's really trying. So I, I really believe that even though it may seem too early to celebrate, it's an encouragement. Yes. Maybe yeah. if we put this out there, other governors that are not performing Challenge might want to get what this. I mean, Rocha as Rocha, uh -huh. when he came, all he these was, things were free. But where the facilities are available to even you know ensure that these uh, checks are carried out, that's where I, for me I say my standards are high. I look at, I tick the box. First and foremost, the facility. I've had cost to visit primary health centers, and if you see what the average Nigerian go through in those places, mm -hmm. so if the facilities we, are not created, no matter how free the people come, they would rather be under the tree, mm -hmm. and okay. then you see so, pictures of people receiving free mm -hmm. health care under the tree. It creates more problems than the solution. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, I, I agree, but we must start from somewhere. Mm. All right, well, like Libera said at the beginning, we are as much about celebrating the good as we are about critiquing the bad. The bottom line, we are advocates for a better society. So let's keep at it as you keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. We'll be here next week, same time. Till then, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye for now. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.